Good morning. It is February the 17th, 2017. Time to kick off another trading day with our customary disclaimer. Hypothetical simulated performance results have certain limitations and like an actual performance record, simulated results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, the results may have under or overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs in general are also subject to the fact that they are designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. Well, it is Friday. It is the countdown to a three-day weekend, President's Day. All markets will be closed on Monday. Um, boy, the ski season looks uh, in jeopardy. I, I saw looked at the weather forecast veil temperatures for this whole week um, upcoming week and this weekend are in the mid to high 40s almost 50 daytime temperatures so uh, I guess it'll be spring skiing early uh, in the day and uh, slush in the afternoons okay I just wanted to point out right here on this um, chart structurally how the markets work and you can see right here this low volume number right here that's where N started came back down within a tick the Q period high was within a tick of this low volume number and then the market gets up to this high volume area within a tick. So if you take out a low volume number, you should go to the next high volume number. So we start the Globex session at a low volume number right there. It holds. We get a mom out of the middle. Take out this low volume number. Uh, end period comes right up to this low volume number. Q period goes within a tick of that low volume number. The slow volume number comes out, and we go to it within a tick of the high volume number. And so you've got this roadmap, this structural roadmap that tells you where the market's going before the fact, and that's very, very important for order entry and exit. Uh, in treasuries especially, because they're responsive markets, they retest support and resistance, Low volume numbers are support and resistance in every market, but in the uh, CBOT contracts, uh, they're pretty, they're very, very strong support and resistance, and it's they're very, very difficult to take out. On go with CME contracts, uh, they're used to game stops, but they are support and resistance, but they play, they're played a little bit differently. So, uh, you come armed if you understand structure and you understand the profile and how it works. You come armed with superior intelligence uh, to into the trading arena, and it can help your bottom line. Uh, we're getting close to the top of res to resistance, which right now is at 125. Uh, we're higher because the E mini uh, sold yesterday, as did the Dow. Uh, equities around the globe are lower. And the ES is pointed lower this morning. Now the issue is, will the ES break or not? If the ES does break, then I imagine Treasury is going to test this 125 area. Uh, resistance is going to build, begin at 28, so 27 to 31 is going to be cell 1. 3 to 7, cell 2. If the E-mini is selling, we don't want any part of the short side of the market. On the buy side, 17 to 18, buy 1. And then 9 to 13 catches that London. Buy 2. And the news this day is pretty limited. We have e-commerce. Uh, they don't make projections on that. My guess is it will come in higher. Last uh, report was plus four percent, and you have to believe that it might. It probably will hit that number, or maybe even a little bit higher, given what's going on 
in the malls, in the um, department stores, etc. LEI plus four tenths. And Baker Hughes again can come in higher than forecast. Last was 1093. A couple of articles out overnight about the um, supply of crude oil that's uh, overhanging the market that's there. Uh, the United States is being seen as the bad guy for the uh, oil pricing right now. Uh, fundamentals say with all the builds that we're having in the United States that oil prices should be lower. Nobody would argue that. Um, but they're not. So the supporting prices out there are proclamations, announcements, news stories, confirmation, uh, wishful thinking, call it what you may, that um, uh, OPEC is 90% in compliance with their production quotas and working to get 100%. I doubt it, but that's the, um, the official OPEC story. Okay, the uh, knob spread has expanded. Uh, we're at number one resistance right here. That's number one. 2731, sell one. 7 to 11, sell two. Again, if the E mini can't take out that 2330, 35 area, then I imagine treasuries are going to come under pressure. Um, on the uh, support side down here, we got 13. Nine and five. So eight to twelve is going to be number one. One to five is going to be buy one. And then twenty-one, twenty-five is going to be buy two. And right now it looks like the market's going to trade higher. Now we're supposed to be 75 degrees here this weekend. It is nuts. I'm going to have to put, turn the sprinklers on just to ensure that I'll be cutting my yard for the first time this year at the start of March. Sometimes we can make it till the end of March before we have to cut grass here, but not this year. Okay, gold. Uh, the buying in Treasury started in London. Here's your London low right there. Um, we had nothing in the way of session last night. We went 38 to um, 40. We had a $2 range, $2 plus range. So, going to have pretty good support right here at 40. And then resistance starts at 45. The low volume number is 47.60. Looks like we're trading higher, so we'll play for that. So I'm going to put a question mark here at 45.47. And <coughs> the desired sell is 49 to 51. On the buy side, 39 to 41, buy one. 35, 37, buy two. We've been talking about stops above 1250 for a while now, uh, and uh, I think they're within reach. So we'll see if we get it today. Uh, if the e mini sells, I think we probably will. Okay, the dollar is split overnight. Up against the euro, down against the yen. So the dollar is mixed. And where 106.50 is support, 106.85 is resistance. London's high was right here at 66, so 
First cell is going to be 65, 75. 85 to 107 will be the second cell band. On the buy side, 40 to 50. 106, 24 by 2. Crude oil, when I looked at it, was, was selling. I don't know if it still is. Okay, that started in London. So again, now this is the April contract. Yesterday, April had more volume than March, but we rolled today. The contract comes off the board. on the uh, 20th officially and that's a holiday so definitely want to be in April today 5375 54 sell one 54 and a quarter 5450 sell two on the buy side uh, 53 53 and a quarter buy one April's trading plus 40 to uh, or it was yesterday to uh, March and then 52.50, 52.75 for buy two. Now the dynamics today buy March, sell April, and that will support April. It'll be done on a spread basis, it always is. Um, it's a specialized trade that uh, people make their living on on the floor. It does not impact the market in a neg negative fashion unless there's a big short squeeze in the March. And right now you just have to feel that um, the producer is very content locking in this price level and rolling them. I would be. I mean, when I get out there and I look at... Uh, um, the higher the price goes, the longer it stays here, the more the U.S. production comes back online and will. And a lot of people don't appreciate this. Uh, again, on a vertical well, where you go down and punch in from the top into the structure, uh, if you shut that one down, um, you, you might lose it. On a horizontal well, you don't lose the production. Um, have to do a little work, but you don't lose the whole well. And um, they're very easy to bring back online. So it's there's talk out there that there's 5,000 horizontally drilled wells that are shut in waiting to come back online when the price is right. So it's pretty easy to ramp up production under those conditions, is my point. And the higher the price goes, the more those come back on. Those the more of those come back online. So. The supply issues, right now uh, the, the bad guy in the world uh, as far as killing oil prices is seen to be the United States. Couldn't be OPEC, right? OPEC cheating or Iran or guys like that. It's the U.S., which if somebody's got to cheat and make a living off of it, why not the U.S.? Yeah, I think we're headed lower right now. I think we're, uh, it's going to be pretty easy to test this 35 area. Uh, we've got this high back over here at 29, so this, and we've got this low right here at 31. So this, this is the area right here that I'm seeing is pretty stout support. I'm going to put a question mark at 35, but our first buy is 30 to 32. Then 25, 27. I don't think the rally in the stock market is over. Um, and um, I think the large institutions will be buying into weakness. Um, as long as Trump hasn't announced his tax plan or industrial policy, I don't think anybody's going to dump their shares. Okay, uh, we've got this very clean break at 43, so 42, 45, sell 1, 49, 51, sell 2. Uh, no specific reason given for the selling. 
time. You know, the market is up six days in a row. Time for a breather. That's how we started out yesterday. And it worked out well for us because we liked the short side first yesterday. Um, and our levels worked out very well. Um, so today I'd like to be short early. See if we can bust the 35 level. If we can't bust the 35 level, we'll have to come back and take a look at it. It's going to take a bit to get everything up and going. I'm going to get busy on that. I will see you as soon as possible.